Hello there. Everyone always remembers the brave Americans riding in on their bald eagles, saving the world from World War II, or Hugo Boss wearing Germans rampaging all over Europe. But what about the poor British? Fighting alone for nearly two years, bombed and surrounded, outnumbered and outgunned, and with very little tea on every front, literally all over the world. Well, I wanted to see if Britain really did need saving historically, and I mean historically. So I'm not only going to be going back to the overly complicated and historical Black Ice mod, but I'm also going to be using only the truly historical divisional organizations and designs for the entire conflict, all based on way too much research, to really see if a damp island filled with tea-swilling nerds can really win the war. For more of this sort of painful historical and overly researched videos, why not subscribe? It's totally free, and each subscription comes with a cup of tea. You just have to make it yourself. All right, here we are, the UK. This is, of course, black ice, which means way more things to think about. We've got a lot more UI and politics stuff. Hugely expanded focus tree. Tons of decisions that I don't understand. Resources and refineries. And the worst part, all of the different research slots and tons of things to research. There's so much here. And don't forget, we're playing Britain, which means we have to be aware of all the different types of tanks that Britain used, from cruisers to infantry tanks to main battle tanks. There's so many different kinds. At least we get the Spitfire. And of course, this is an historical divisions video, so we'll be playing around with all of our divisional designs so very much. And trust me, it gets very painful. As ever, our first order of business in the focus tree is look for anything that gives us research slots or bonuses and beeline that, because my goodness, do I need to research a lot of things. We've also got some terrible spirits. Look at that, the war to end all wars. Recruitable pop factor, but also we can't change our eco or conscription laws. This is going to be terrible. We can get to early Moby through some focuses, though, so we just have to keep an eye on world tension and what's going on in the world and be ready. Definitely going to go dispersed industry to prepare for that big old Battle of Britain. At least we do start with quite a lot of resources as the British. So much chromium and other things. We're pretty rich. The biggest problem with the UK is that there's just so much I have to contend with. I have to defend Britain. I have to defend Africa, both North Africa and East Africa. I've got to Malta and little islands and everything. I've got to do Gibraltar. There's there's Asia. There's just so much to think about. Stop the presses. Churchill is upset. Oh my God. I'm sure it's fine. Germany's of no concern and I'm sure Churchill won't become politically important later. I've also got to be preparing for all the different kinds of tanks I'm going to need. I'm going to need so many cruiser tanks which are cavalry tanks in this mod, and Matildas, which are infantry tanks? I, I don't know. Not to mention all of the different ship designs, including the Kingfisher class, the historical escorts. I'm going to need to build a lot of these. These are the boys that accompany all the convoys and protect against submarines. Give me everything you've got. I hate getting submarine to death. As ever in Black Eyes, all the tank designs are stupidly accurate. It's got the two heavy machine guns. It's got the 40 millimeter two pounder. It's got the right armor. It's glorious. This tank was only built in very limited numbers, but hey, I need something, okay? I'm sure Belgian trying to focus on self-defense and not collaborating with the Allies won't be a problem later. Here we go, King Eddie's gone, thank goodness we can get George on and maybe try to fix our country and economy. I've also been rushing the Hawker Hurricane plane, which I've just now got. Sadly, Black Eyes doesn't have airplane customizability, so I'm not going to be able to showcase it. But this plane is very important. It's not exactly the Spitfire, but it will do for now and means that I can actually build fighters that are not a stupid biplane. It doesn't matter, though, because Ireland's just become independent. <laughs> no. How could you do this? I've been quietly building up for over a year and a half. We can finally do early mobilization, which means we can at last switch to military factories. It does, unfortunately, take two months to finish, but we can move now towards partial Moby in a little bit once we complete some more focuses and also get 20% world tension. There's just so much to think about in this mod. And the events, my god, I am really struggling with food right now, but I'm going to now have my ration storage set to max from New Zealand. This is just a one-off event where they just give me all of the food in the world. Why? Thank you, New Zealand. I love your sheep. Just got the beautiful Spitfire. It's basically just better than the Hurricane in almost every way. It's got more air superiority. So we're just going to pivot heavily to making these. Like, I need so many factories on this. It is now the 1st of January, 1939. So it's finally time to talk about our divisional designs. We'll, of course, start with the infantry division. And you know what? This looks pretty normal, right? Maybe a bit too much artillery, but it seems doable, right? Well, the British Army does not agree because, oh my god, they love their anti-tank. According to all the sources I've been able to find, more details of which are available for YouTube members and patrons, this infantry division had 75 pieces of two-pounder anti-tank, which is anti-tank within both the divisional artillery section and also nine anti-tank guns per infantry regiment, which is just crazy. 
All the artillery is motorized, so I need to be adding quite a lot of dedicated motorized anti-tank to this division. Alongside that, there are 72 pieces of 18-pounder artillery, which are just kind of regular light artillery. Over to the support companies, there is no anti-air. There's supposed to be armored reconnaissance using Bren carriers, but we can't have them yet. The research doesn't let us have it. Engineer signals and ambulance, as well as anti-tank rifles given dedicated to the divisions. The game currently starts it off with heavy artillery as a support company, but they definitely did not have that. That comes later, so we'll remove that. So here it is, the accurate historical infantry division of 1939. This is what went into France. Look at this artillery. I hate it. Its org is terrible. Next up, we have the Territorial Division, and all sources I can find show that the British Territorial Army was actually designed exactly as the regular infantry army. They were meant to be used as defensive units in the event of invasion, but were also used to funnel more trained troops into the regular army, so they were just the same. I will represent this by just making the exact same division for home defense, but replacing some of the infantry battalions with light infantry, so they use less advanced and heavy equipment. The British 1939 tank division was also very weird, and we have to deal with the fact that it had lots of different kinds of tanks in it. Counting up all of the different tanks within the different tank regiments or brigades, there are 216 light tanks, 213 light cruisers, and 63 heavy cruisers, as well as 24 close support cruisers. This is a little tricky because there are lots of different types of tanks, and I don't have all of them available. The regular cruiser is going to take the place of the light cruiser, and the Valentine, I guess, will have to take the place of the heavy cruiser. The CS Cruiser is literally not available yet, so I will just get that later on, and the light tank will be the light tank. So this is basically what I think is the best possibility, with only one little bit of the infantry tank representing the CS Cruiser. It's okay, there's a lot of tanks in this division, a lot of tanks. There are meant to be two mechanized units, but they don't have them available to research just yet, so I'll represent them with motorized infantry. And for the artillery side, there are 32 pieces of motorized light artillery 18-pounder guns and 18 two-pounder anti-tank guns, as well as signals, engineer, hospital, and maintenance company. So adding all of that gives us this as the final tank division. However, to represent the total amount of actual manpower, as well as the total amount of actual trucks in the division, I'm going to add two more motorized infantry battalions, because otherwise the manpower just doesn't really work. And this gives us an okay division. It's not the best. It's org is four. <laughs> it's not great. Don't worry, it gets changed pretty soon, though. Next up is the Motorized Infantry Division, which is similar to an infantry division, just sort of two-thirds the size, and it has six motorized battalions, 42 pieces of two-pounder anti-tank, dear god, with the same weirdness in the infantry division where the AT is split amongst the divisional artillery and the AT in the infantry regiments. It has 24 40mm Bofors AA guns and 48 18-pounder artillery. Furthermore, with motorcycle recon, engineers, signals, mechanics, and hospitals, this is what the final division looks like. That's a lot of artillery. I'm also going to be replacing all the divisions on our little garrison islands. I mean, look at this little thing. It's so useless. This is meant to represent the literal men inside of a fortification on an island, but that doesn't make sense when you're thinking about defending the entire island. And indeed, places like Malta and Gibraltar were brought up to divisional strength in 1939 anyway. Way. So we'll just use the territorial army design instead of this weird nonsense. Oh yeah, France is impressed. They want to join the allies. Come on in. Oh, almost forgot to assign the handheld anti-tank to all of my infantry battalions. This represents the Piat Projector Infantry Anti-Tank Gun, which was issued to bloody everybody. They love this damn thing. All right, it's August 39 now, so it's time to get ready. I've got my fleets all set up. I've got a beautiful home defense section guarding all of the surrounding British coast. I've got escorts and submarines and even minesweepers. I'm bloody ready, mate. I've got the Mediterranean stacked with carriers and, of course, escorts and patrols. I'm very happy with this. I think we should be able to handle the Italians. I've got most of an army ready to help out in Belgium when the invasion inevitably occurs, as well as a decent amount of air force ready as well. Probably should assign these guys to generals. As well as eight more infantry divisions that are on their way down to go up against the Italian border in East Africa. I've got a little while, though, because they shouldn't join until Paris falls. God, I gotta remember to enable automatic reinforcement and split off to stop my entire fleet going home in the moment one of them catches a slight boo-boo. Air wings are now starting to get assigned. It's mostly hurricanes. Don't really have a lot of Spitfires just yet, but it's okay. We're still producing them. It's all kicked off, so let's join the war with Poland. I am ready. Oh my god, maybe I'm not. Okay, I completely forgot to mobilize my army. So I've just joined a war, and my army is currently in freaking reserve army. This means I have like a 75 or 90% 80% malice to every single thing. I should have been raising this over the last year. 
It does it automatically for me, bit by bit, but it's going to take me like three months to hit to General Moby. This could be terrible. I cannot fight anything until this is done. At least we can finally move up to partial mobilization. I prefer war economy, but it's something. And also get up a little bit more conscription to 19 to 30. I, there's something I can do through focuses, but I need the manpower now. We're getting some naval victories, though. A couple destroyers from the patrol fleet are getting sunk, and escorts as well. Not too bad. The Poles are dead, so we've just received a bunch of divisions from them in exile. They're actually quite chunky. Not too bad. We'll just use them as sort of filler divisions. Thank goodness for the phony war, it's December and we haven't done any fighting and we're now at General Moby. Also, we're almost in 1940, which means that we should be doing our next divisional designs, but we're not going to do them yet because the British Army didn't make these changes until after May and after Dunkirk and all that. So I'm going to wait until France has fallen before I make the next changes. Before I forget, we also do need to think about the African divisions, and sources are a little bit thin on the ground here, but the best I can find is a source based on the King's African Rifles, which primarily were more light infantry rather than regular infantry, thus using less infantry guns, and a reduced quantity of motorized light artillery, which in this context would be pack artillery for the desert. Desert Support Company, Ambulance and Recon and Engineers, and I think this is pretty accurate. It's basically just a weaker, crappier regular infantry division, specifically equipped for the desert. We also have a unique feature called The Plan, which is all about cooperative sharing of training pilots for fighting in the Battle of Britain across the Commonwealth. I have to dedicate production of trainer aircraft and then train pilots. Uh, eventually, once I get like 5,000 pilots, I'll be able to get a little bonus to my air units. Okay, the invasion into Norway has occurred. I think I need to try and help here, maybe send some extra divisions over. I've got eight in training, the ones who are the most trained, I'll send them to Belgium. And the really experienced guys I'll send to Norway. We need to try and halt the advance. We formed up on the line in Belgium on the rivers, trying to build at least some kind of defense and got all of our air right into Belgium. We're actually disrupting quite a lot of planes. Yeah, look at this. Three losses to their 11. That's fantastic. We're going to win the air war. Hmm, I can't help but notice that the Germans are easily pushing my tank divisions. Uh, oh, and we're actually getting completely pushed back. We've lost about 7k equipment to their 6k, which is not terrible, mostly clothes and guns, but... Hmm, we're getting hurt here. And oh, they've put a lot of fighters here now, and the ratio has swapped. I'm losing 13 to... Okay, yeah, never mind. Okay, for some reason, Italy has just joined the Axis. Oh, it is July 1940, but Paris has not fallen. I do not have enough divisions on this line. I'll assign my Air Force now. I think also try to build some pillbox defenses on El Alamein, because I can imagine I'm going to be pushed back here really quickly. Pillbox defenses are like really cheap, easy, early forts. You only get one level of them. But so far, we've not lost Belgium. You know, it's July. We are losing hundreds of planes a month. But come on, we're doing all right. We've also managed to halt the German advance in Norway. I mean, it's looked a little precarious. We've managed to do something. We've protected Oslo, and we're doing small pushes. This is good. We're doing way better than historical, though the rivers are getting touched a little bit and the Germans are really mounting up an offense. Oh yeah, they've turned back on. The Germans are pushing. Look at those tanks. They are just crushing into my divisions and wrecking me. All right, start pulling back. We're going to need to defend on the west. Maybe try and like, get to a port. Oh, destroyers for bases. Yes, this is so good. We get 40 destroyers from US and Canada and all we have to do is lose a bunch of islands I don't care about anyway. Amazing. We've got some divisions in circle. That's okay. We're just going to try to retreat down to Valsier, and Dunkirk may not be a possible retreat site, but let's let's just run. Lille is not going to hold for much longer. I'm trying to rush as fast as I can. Okay, Paris is looking a little weak. Bye-bye, France. Sorry, I am out of here. I am running the hell out of here and going straight back to Blighty. Sorry, buddy. I'm sure you'll be fine. And in the wake of that, Chamberlain has resigned. Huzzah! Bye, weird mustache man. Say hello to Jowly Man. Well, the British Army has officially left France and not been destroyed, so we have kept the BEF, minus a couple divisions. Now it's sort of just waiting for France to sort of explode. I uh, did forget about Italian East Africa, though. I didn't put as many divisions on there as I would have liked. We're going to lose a big chunk of that. We're starting to get hit a little bit in Egypt, but we're trying to do some pushes as well. I think we got to do something here. It's also now October 1940 and France has pretty much fallen, so I think I can now make the 1940 changes. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. You, meaning me. And now a quick word from our Prime Minister. Hello, I'm Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom and this YouTube channel. Aldrahill makes weekly videos about historical organizations and fun and interesting challenges. However, his videos take many hours of research, practice and frustration. Not to mention all of the editing and recording. 
So that's why I, Winston Churchill, recommend you checking out supporting this channel by becoming a YouTube member or joining over on Patreon. Amongst all of the various benefits you get from supporting this illustrious YouTube channel, you get access to early videos with a special upload just for you. Not to mention all of the historical sources, documents, and texts used to make the historical videos. You, you get to have your name at the end of each video in that snazzy little end screen, plus a special channel in the Discord for having incredibly vital discussions with Alger Hill. Plus, you get to have divisions and equipment designs and all manner of things named after you in the videos. After all, who doesn't remember the glory of the Yum Suk Tank? <coughs> now, now, you don't have to support the channel. These videos will always be free, but if you have the means and you want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below this video or heading on over to patreon.com slash Hill. Thank you. Now, back to the video. These changes were all made in the wake of the Dunkirk evacuation and the realization that the army might need some modernization. The infantry division stayed relatively similar in that it had 9 infantry and 75 motorized 2-pounder anti-tank, but its artillery got divided up a lot, and I think this is because a lot of the 18-pounders were left behind at Dunkirk. So instead of 72 18-pounder artillery guns, there is actually 48 25-pounders, 12 18-pounders, and 12 4.5-inch heavy howitzers. However, while I would love to then have light, medium, and heavy artillery in this division, Black Eyes has really specifically named the artillery you can get in research, and the light artillery is both the 18 and the 25 pounder, with the 25 pounder replacing the 18. Whereas the 4.5 inch howitzer is actually just the medium artillery. So really, I'm just going to be using light artillery and replacing some of the light artillery with a couple mediums. It, it feels a little worse, but I'm trying to conform both to history and to the mod, and this is what the guns are named for. Let me know in the comments if you disagree with me, but I'm doing my best here, guys. It also specifically gained a maintenance company as well, and that's the Infantry Division. The Motorized Infantry Division also changed a lot in that it grew. It absorbed an extra regiment and became nine motorized infantry. It also got the full complement of anti-tank and artillery of 75 AT guns, 24 18 pounders, 24 four and a half inch pounders, and 24 25 pounders, as well as motorcycle recon, supply signals, and engineer, so it's a lot like a regular infantry division. The tank division, however, became really different in that it was a lot more regimented and organized. It actually lost all of its light tanks and gained quite a lot of cruisers, now having over 300 cruiser tanks and only 36 CS tanks. Alongside that, it has two motorized infantry battalions, with an additional two added by me to represent the extra manpower and trucks in the division, 24 motorized 2-pounder anti-tank guns, 24 motorized AA at 40mm, and 16, weirdly, 25-pounder artillery. And so this is the tank division. It's a lot more intelligent. I like it a lot. It's basically just only cruisers, but it also has a little bit of CS tanks that I'm representing with infantry tanks. All these changes mean I am massively in deficit of medium artillery because I wasn't building medium artillery. I'm stupid. God damn it. Also, what the hell? Some of my divisions were trying to be moved to North Africa. They decided to go through France and now France has capitulated. They're stuck in Vichy. Thankfully, it's formed Vichy, which means they've been black flag, so I can just send them home. But good God, they could have been destroyed. Why AI? With France falling, we can now go Britain stands alone, getting a lot more recruitable pop, and eventually go down the focus line for colonies for free France, which eventually gives us Operation Overlord. It just takes a really long time. Oh yeah, Battle of Britain has fully begun now. They are putting a lot of fighters into the southeast England, and I just don't have the fighters for this. I'm building as many as I can, but this is terrifying. Look, look, look at how many casualties my planes have suffered. Four out of 50. Oh god. That's alright, we can do Operation Catapult and steal the Vichy French fleet. I'm sure that'll be fine. And of course, they reject it. So, pfft, never mind then. Uh, we, we're supposed to get at least some of the ships, and they're supposed to lose most of them as well, but I, I don't know. Nothing seems to have really happened. In the very least, we can do a whole bunch of speeches. The Never Give Up speech from Churchill. We can do the Their Finest Hour speech, giving us stability and some manpower here and there. Oh, and also thank the RAF, which gives us even more air bonuses, so very nice. We are massively losing in the naval front against the Italians. All of my capital ships are trying to repair, probably in Malta, mistakenly. I need to move them away. Maybe give our guys a little chance to rest a little bit. 
some big battles going on with not... Okay, we actually destroyed quite a lot of screens there. We're kind of winning. We're trading. It's just we're not coming away unscathed. Here's some absolutely terrible news. I was really looking forward to recruiting some Indian divisions and showing them off. But now India has somehow become a dominion, no longer a puppet, which means I am not allowed to recruit divisions from them. They just help me in the wars. I guess because I was trading too much with them. Look, they're not in the list. This is terrible. Oh, damn. Look at the number of French divisions that have just been given to me after the fall of France. They're beefy, too. I'm going to put these to good use. Oh, yeah. This is just painful. I'm losing seven to one planes in the southeast England. I've got a few fighters from America, thanks to a lend lease and a focus, but it's not enough. I'm so out of planes. I'm getting bombed to hell. Literally, the only enemy plane casualties are occurring due to AA. Like, we're just doing nothing. We have shot down hundreds of enemy bombers, but we have, like, no fighters. We have saved Egypt from the fascist menace by uh, annexing them which is a thing that we can do. Sorry, Egypt. It's 1941, and I've only just realized I could be requesting divisions from India. I think I'm a stupid person. Yeah, I think I'm just an idiot. I could just nick some divisions from India and bring them over to help in Africa. Look, look, they're just sitting here doing nothing. Why? Why am I so stupid? Oh my god. Thank you, America. 20k guns. We are completely out of guns. This is incredible. Thank you. A lot of our focuses now in this little branch are all about fighting limited wars with Vichy France to whittle down the colonial territories of bad France until eventually, once I'm completely done with it, I can move towards Operation Overlord. But I have to do all of these first, like for the Caribbeans and St. Pierre. It takes ages. We have at least managed to completely win in Norway. We have defeated the German inv- mm, there's already another one. Bro, literally, as I'm celebrating, there's already another German invasion. It's okay, we can contain this one as well. Just go, go, go. Oslo might fall, though. Oh, Christ, why has Iraq just declared war on me? I've got no troops there. Okay, pull back some of the guys in Africa. Let's go, go, go. And alongside that, maybe we should just pull back a bit from the African front. Try to retreat to El Alamein. We're getting wrecked here. Okay, the Battle of Britain might get a little bit easier here because now the Soviets are at war with the Germans. Maybe all those planes can go somewhere else. Yes, they are no longer over England. They're over Russia. Thank God. A bit metagamey, but I'm going to start to move some of my destroyers and other ships over to the Pacific Fleet because I'm going to need to have some ships in anticipation of Japan very shortly. This whole Vichy France focus thing is really weird. It splits off the bit you are fighting into the colonies of Vichy France, and then you have to go and fight them, like the French Caribbean. So it's just like tiny little border wars with small states, and as I beat them, I have to move to another part of the world and do the exact same thing. Behold the power of the Indian troops. Yes, I brought so many over, and we have managed to capitulate Italian East Africa, thus encircling and surrounding dozens and dozens of Italian divisions. They are wrecked. Though I will say it's really annoying that India will not join my new war against Iran or Iraq, which is just happening now, because I'm not able to get there. Iraq's in the way and I can't beat them. And because India is a dominion, they will not join. So Iran's just going to sit there bothering the Soviets. I don't like it. It's not historical. I'm supposed to be helping the Soviets kill Iran. We've also finally got the beautiful Crusader tank, Britain's first foray into actually useful tanks. It's got the base of machine gun. It's got coaxial. It's got the QF2 pounder. It's got the right armor. It's beautiful. The model is weird, but it's the right kind of tank. All of our tank divisions are basically just going to be this now. Oh my god, it's time. Yes, the US has joined, which means Japan has attacked everybody. Oh god, we've got boys already ready in British Malaya, but there's no one on Siam. Okay, we're going to have to steal loads of divisions from India to be able to survive this. They're going to crush into Burma. And of course, I didn't put more forces in Hong Kong. There goes that naval base. Uh, let's just send our navy over here to try to protect Singapore or something. Move them out. There we go. Tons of Indian divisions. We're just going to push them all the way over. Can you please hold everything? Oh yes, now the US is in, they're actually giving me lend lease, garands and everything. Thank you, Roosevelt. Sadly, they can't send us men, so we're gonna have to go up to the like 1840 bracket, or rather the expanded draft, three-year draft. I just don't have enough men for this. We're building so many Spitfires now, the Mark Vs. I'm gonna upgrade it to the Mark Nine now. This is the big boy. This is what's really going to mean we can defeat every German plane we see. Oh god, the entirety of the East Indies has been destroyed. Oh my god, how did this happen? Hey, we've also got the Churchill Heavy Tank. Very, very cool. Not actually named after Winston Churchill, supposedly. It's got the 25-pounder howitzer, the machine guns, and the extra weird little two-pounder as a turret. It's a very tonky tank. It's expensive, though, but we're going to build some because some of our divisions get it in a little bit. First American troops are finally arriving on the front in Africa at the moment, but it's something. Maybe they can help us mop up and win in North Africa. I wish they'd focus more in the Pacific, though, because we're losing a lot of little islands. I just don't have the forces to garrison them. And Australia's on their own. It's also now January 1942, so it's time for the latest divisional update. Getting started, of course, with the infantry. 
The big change here is that alongside these 72 pieces of 2-pounder anti-tank guns, they also gained 48 6-pounder anti-tank guns for some reason, which the game relegates as medium anti-tank, so we're going to need to add some pretty chunky battalions of that. Furthermore, it finally gained some proper AA, actually 54 pieces of 40mm AA, which is light AA in this mod, but I can only add that as a support company and not in line. I'm actually really struggling to fit all the artillery I need to put in this, so I'm actually going to have to move the three regiments into two just to be able to fit them all in because I have to slap in so many different battalions. I'm also going to make one of the infantry battalions assault infantry to represent the fact that submachine guns were being added at this point. So there we go, there is the finished infantry division of 1942. Look at all that artillery and anti-tank, medium and light, it's awful. The other main change that happened in 1942 was the Armoured Brigade underwent some pretty significant changes primarily only to the African tank division, so we're mostly just going to do that there. But what's really interesting about this division is that it's equal parts Crusader tanks and US Lend-Lease tanks, including Lees and Shermans, 52 of each. As well as that, there is the weirdness of 72 Priest vehicles, which are self-propelled 25-pounder guns. But we're not able to use that yet because we don't have access to the Priest yet. There's literally no way we could ever have access to it now. So instead, I'm going to have to use any vehicle that has a 25-pounder gun as its armament, which is basically the Matilda close support tank. And alongside that, it's got four motorized battalions, it has 64 anti-tank at 6 pounders, which means medium anti-tank, and 24 anti-tank at 2 pounders, as well as that some AA and all the regular support companies. So our final tank division looks like this. An odd mixture of cavalry tanks, medium tanks, and close support tanks, and a whole mess of anti-tank. Oh boy, it's unpleasant. Let's just hope that the Americans will send us some Shermans to fill this in. Interestingly, the Norway campaign has managed to halt. The Germans haven't really pushed much, so I wonder if maybe I can try to counter it again by sending these boys over to push towards Oslo. Oh my god, America, Chad, they just gave me 200k manpower for garrisons. That's gonna help so much. <laughs> Thank you, Roosevelt. Soviet war has been happening for quite a while now, and it's not really pushed too much. I am surprised. Smolensk has fallen, Kiev... I expected more from the Germans. Oh, it looks like the Soviets actually did Iran without me. Okay, <laughs> let's bypass the focus. That's fine. Oh, they even gave us territory. Whatever, thanks a lot. Oh man, it's taken me this damn long to get the number four Mark I Lee Enfield. An absolutely beautiful gun you'd be very lucky to find in a collector's store. Beautiful sights. Ah, I'd, I'd love to have one. Oh, and also we finally have our own medium tank, the Centaur, with a 57mm gun and a bunch of coaxial machine guns as well. It's a beautiful little tank and, of course, completely accurate. Not a lot of these were made. They were very quickly replaced a little bit later, but I'm still going to be using them because I need a lot of medium tanks. Also, we have finally finished all of the weird Vichy France focuses so we can return to Europe, giving us some naval tech, and then finally go down the long list of prep for Overlord, giving us lots of little bonuses here and there for the eventual invasion. Also, now it's later in 1942. I'm going to make a small change to the infantry divisions in Africa, I'm going to be calling them the Africa Divisions, and I'm going to be giving them a desert support company to represent Britain's, you know, growing experience in the desert. This just makes them better of hot acclimatization factor and makes them better fighters. I think it makes sense. If anything, I should have done it sooner. The US finally has the Sherman available, the M4A2 Sherman, so I'm going to buy the license for that so I can start to make it myself. Oh, it's glorious. It's got the accurate gun. It's beautiful. I love the Sherman, man. It's such a good tank. Come on, you gotta love it. We're gonna build loads of these because they need to be almost equal to Crusaders in our tank divisions. Oh my god, we have finally done Commonwealth Joint Air Training. We have enough trained pilots. 5% bonus. Let's go. This is gonna help out our pilots. We also just got the Canadian Armored Division through focuses, and it's pretty historical as far as I can tell. We'll do more about this when we actually end up playing Canada in these videos themselves. But man, look at this. This feels right. Uh, what? India is now free. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> it's free? I didn't even get an announcement. It's just free. It's a free country. Led by Mohammed al Jina. Well, they contributed so much to the war that they just went, now nah, we're free. And I didn't even get an event. All right. Oh, they've taken back all the forces I requested from them. Oh my God, I'm going to lose the Dutch East Indies in Singapore. Why have you done this to me, India? <laughs> well, since I'm going to have to be naval invading a lot of lost territory, it's time to make our Marines. The British Royal Marine Division has a long and interesting history, but basically they're useless now. So they were reconstituted as as the Special Service Brigade, and essentially were commanders, and sort of precursor to Special Forces. But in 1943, they did still act in some capacity as Marines and Naval Landing Forces, and there were six battalions of Marines, and some complement of pack artillery, most likely two battalions worth, as well as some heavy-arty support, 
engineered AA and support anti-tank and signals. But for now, this is the Marine Division of 1943. It's not the greatest, but it's something. Why don't we put the Marines through their paces and try a proper naval invasion in Italy somewhere? I've got the fleets and we're trying in Cagliari it's not going super well. I mean, it's 76 in the green bubble, but they are not dying. Oh yeah, they've been reinforced. Okay, we're screwed. Retreat, retreat. This didn't work. Italy, you're free for another day. Honestly, we lost so much manpower. We gotta go to expanded draft and just keep going up with the manpower recruitments. We're so low. We've lost so many men. Maybe foreign recruitment as well to get some non-core. I gotta do something against Italy, man. I've given extra supplies to my tanks under Montgomery. We are gonna push, okay? I am ready. I've been building ports and railways. Look at the trains choo-chooing in. We're gonna do this. Yes, finally. We have air superiority, and now we have numerical superiority. Unfortunately, we are starting to lose some ships because my boys keep trying to repair in Malta, and they keep getting naval bombed to hell. More exciting, though, is that it is March 1944, so it's time to finally make our final designs for the video, the 1944 boys. These are the ones who landed on Normandy. The infantry division gets a little bit more centralized and consistent with its equipment, having a total of 72 pieces of 25-pounder artillery and nothing else. And the AT guns also get a little interesting. There are now 42 anti-tank guns, which are 6-pounders, which in BICE is a medium AT. But there's now 32 17-pounder heavy artillery. And in BICE, heavy artillery can only be a support company, so I have to add that as a support company, which means I can actually take some of the anti-tank in my battalions away and just replace it with a support company. It's very satisfying. Alongside finally being able to add mechanized recon, this is the final infantry division of the British Empire. It's actually not terrible. The tank division also underwent some pretty significant changes, but the actual tanks used within each division are up for some debate. The Guards Armour Division, which I'll be basing this design on, used entirely Shermans. A total of 36 17-pounder Shermans and 129 75mm Shermans. However, because all the tank divisions in the British Army did use an amalgamation of different tanks, I'm going to represent this by having half of the tank battalions be mediums, to represent Shermans, and half of them be a mix of infantry tanks and cruiser tanks, to represent the Crusader tanks and Churchill tanks as well being used throughout the British Army. Alongside that, it definitely finally had proper mechanized infantry, one battalion's worth, and 24 25-pounder light artillery, as well as 24 25-pounder SP guns, which we can represent with the addition of the close support gun, because that does still use the 25-pounder gun, the cruiser close support gun. However, the division also has 24 anti-tank SP guns, and if you look here, you'll see that there are basically no anti-tank self-propelled guns except for the Valentine Archer, which is too heavy and too big, as well as the Churchill tank. It's just too much. It wouldn't work right, and I haven't researched it yet. So instead of that, I think I'm just going to represent it with the addition of some motorized medium anti-tank, because it's a 17-pounder gun. And we're actually going to add two of them, because there already are also 24 medium 17-pounder anti-tank guns here. So we're going to add two battalions of that. If I do eventually get an anti-tank tank destroyer design, I will add that. But for now, I think this is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this tank design. Though I'm going to add one more motorized infantry to represent the additional manpower, because now it's much more accurate at around 12,000. So there we go. This is our final tank division. It's not bad. Okay, dear God, Japan, please stop invading me in Africa. Go away. Oh, what? Look at this! Operation Torch! USA did it without me! Oh, that's fantastic! Oh, I gotta get some more divisions over there to try and help out. Also, unfortunately, I've missed time things. We're just finishing Train the Forces, which adds 180 days to a timer. And I can't start Operation Overlord until that's finished. And it's already June 1944, so I'm afraid we're gonna miss D-Day. We've just not done it right. The timing is so tricky! But in half a year, we can start this, and then we can go. The Soviet front has completely stalled. I'm gonna try and set an attaché to see if- Oh, they don't want me to have an attaché. It's okay, I'll improve relations. And there we go, they will accept. I hate this feature. Let's see what's going on over here. Okay, that is a lot of divisions on the line on both sides, but they're just not really doing anything or pushing. I guess they're waiting for the air to finish up. Though it's worth mentioning that the Germans are completely out of manpower. They are on scraping the barrel and 12 to 70 bracket. Those are the maximum brackets. They can get no more recruitable pop and they're basically out. We are good. Every man they lose now cannot be replaced. Uh, what? What? What is this? This is a D-Day. The Americans just did a D-Day and I didn't even realize it. Did they finish the focus? No, it's still there. They've just done a separate D-Day. They've just manually invaded. Oh my god. Go, 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 go. Bring everyone over. Shunt all the air over northern France. Let's go. Bring every fighter. Bring every gas. And while I wasn't even paying attention, the Siamese Empire just capitulated. India and Burma themselves did it. They pushed them out. 
That is incredible. Japan is also totally out of manpower, scraping the barrel on 12 till 70. They got nothing left. I managed to smuggle in some available divisions into this little new Le Havre Normandy pocket, and we're just trying to push everywhere we can. Paris is open. I'm just sending everyone, man. The glorious Channel Islands has been freed, and my boys are now fighting the first German tanks. Can my one tank beat that cool German tank? Dear God, no. This is the Canadian Armament Division. It's getting absolutely wrecked by this medium panzer. That's frightening. Oh dear God, Japan just keeps invading me in Africa. Can you stop? Germans being real sneaky. They put all of their Air Force bombers into the English Channel, just trying to sink any convoys they can. I'm trying to fight them. They're not really contesting the land. They're just only trying to sink my convoys. It hurts a lot. We're kind of stuck here now. There's quite a lot of tanks, but if I use my infantry, I absolutely destroy them because of all the anti-tanks. So to be honest, I think I just have to use my infantry to push. My tanks are not very good. Let's just do these little angled pushes. Look at that. Yeah, red bubbles, but we wreck them. Get enough men, and I think the Germans are going to collapse. At least they're starting to make some games in North Africa, though they are really trying to cut me off. This is requiring a lot of micro. I really should have turned on allied battle plans before, so I could have seen the D-Day landing. Look, they're already doing another one in Bordeaux. Nothing really in Japan, but China is absolutely winning. Probably because Japan's completely run out of manpower. Hey, Bletchley Park. Cool. Oh man, seriously, look at all the piercing I can do on the enemy tank divisions because of all my anti-tank. It's so good. We're actually doing damage. I'm not really pushing very much, and I am suffering a lot of casualties, but hey. This will probably weaken the Soviet front. I very quickly want to make my very final design, the first airborne division, known as the Red Devils. These guys were pretty cool, kind of small, and they were six parachute battalions, but they also had a lot of anti-tank in them, which is really weird. They actually technically, alongside things like signals and stuff like that, they had 17-pounder anti-tank, which would be a heavy anti-tank battery, but that makes it non-parachutable, because the game limits what can actually be parachuted. So we have to remove that, and instead we'll just add it to the other anti-tank that was added, because they also had 6-pounder anti-tank. Freaking 84 of them! But the only thing I can do is do airborne light anti-tank, so I'm gonna have to do that instead, because the game just doesn't let me. And look just how many anti-tank I have to add, it's crazy. There is also supposed to be about 24, I think, uh, light artillery pieces, 25 pounders, but I'm not able to add them because they are not droppable. But that's only because I have neglected to finish the Paratroopers 3 tech, which gives me airborne pack artillery, so that's just my fault. I haven't researched it in time, but I will do that now, and I will make it so that once that's done, I can get the correct amount of artillery in my paratroopers. But for now, we'll convert these guys who are at home into paratroop boys and start planning some invasions. Maybe we can do some fun things with them. The Soviets have realized they could actually just start attacking because all the forces are in the West. Look at that, they're finally moving. I don't have any intel over the Soviets, but that's okay. Germany's gonna start suffering really soon because they are literally zero manpower. It's beautiful. We have a Bordeaux invasion, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God, it's all kicking off. I have also just finished the Operation Overlord focus, so I think that means I can actually trigger the plan. Yes, yes I can, Operation Overlord. It gives me some bonuses in the states. All right, let's do it. And it uh, it releases some partisans. That, that's it, some French partisans. Woo, that was worth it. Oh my god, the Americans are active. They've invaded in Willemshaven. Let's go. Let's put some more forces over there. Screw the French line. Let's just go straight to Germany. Let's bull rush them. I've got boys in Germany now, and I've set up a little parachute drop into Germania. They've landed on Berlin, and... <laughs> They're all gonna die. Oh, I'm so sorry, Red Devils. You're done. Oh, that's sad. We'll just have to take it normally. Oh, should I embargo the Greater German Reich? Wow, that'll be really useful now, considering I'm about to capitulate them. Okay, there's Romania and Hungary and Germany. That was amazing, but there's something they could do. They're completely out of manpower. Then we just quickly cap Italy, because they have very few forces left. And it's peace time, baby. And for some reason, the Alta Conference has been completely ignored. The Soviets have just taken all of Germany. I've puppeted most of Italy. But the main thing I did is I took a whole bunch of ships. So let's go to Japan and see if we can win this war on our own. We're going to destroy the Japanese Navy. Ah, oh, once again, America's beat me to it. They've invaded Nagasaki and are just pouring over. And there it is. Japan's capitulated. America did it all. Oh, man, I wanted to help. Unfortunately, I can't get through the peace deal because the game just keeps crashing every single time I click finish, so we're gonna have to end it here, but we have indeed won the war, resulting in some pretty terrible borders, but it's fine, in 1st of December 1946, using entirely historical divisions. Here is the infantry design that we ended the game with. So much artillery, but not as much anti-tank as it used to have, and the weirdness that is our tank division. But hey, this worked. We did pretty well. Thank you very much for watching. Do be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the video and indeed this series in general so far. 
And thank you very much to all YouTube members and Patreon supporters, whose names you will see very shortly, and you can join by clicking the Join button down below. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.